Okay, everyone, I was planning on doing this second one about the browsers, kind of alternates to the Firefox theme. Uh, the These ones are more oriented for, like, the keyboard ones and then the Chromium-based ones, kind of some of the more popular ones somewhat, and some other ones in there. Um, someone did bring up this one that I wanted to kind of cover real quick as kind of a, an addendum to the previous one. This one's called Falcon. I kind of played a little bit around with it a little bit and it does have like basic ad blocking and things like that so you can see your ad block settings and whatnot up there but as i was going through the preferences it doesn't it has a lot but at the same time it doesn't feel like it has a lot so it has some pre-built extensions the extensions library seems kind of limited which kind of makes me sad. You've got, I think this is like all of the extensions that they have and that's it. And then you've got the themes in here too and there are only like two of them. Oh, it, it is a QT based project, a KDE. Adblock I want to say is pretty rudimentary otherwise. Um, yeah, it looks like it uses easy list and then like some other small ad blocking stuff so yeah falcon's kind of pretty basic um based on what was it qt web engine so it does have a chromium underlaying it's just got like the qt ui and all that that fits in really well with oh your kde theme if that's your thing so the next one is ungoogled chromium this one's really popular because what it is is it's chromium just the same but all they've done is they've removed all of Google's additional stuff to it. So if you went into the web store, for example, if I can... Chrome Web Store. So if you went into the Chrome Web Store and you were, like, looking, let's go with Todoist... It doesn't have the um, anything for installing extensions, but you can see up here that I've got uBlock Origin installed. So with ungoogled Chromium, you kind of have to take some time to install them manually through the developer side of stuff. So if you're in your settings, it's right under my nose. Okay, so you can go to the extensions thing, and you've got to basically look and manually load it yourself. So you kind of turn on that developer mode to do that. So yeah, you can enable it here. And for those that want uBlock Origin, you're either going to have to download the package straight from GitHub, the zip file. Or if you're on any Arch-based distro like Manjaro... Artix and the like that has access to the AUR, you can actually install the uBlock Origin package and then you just point oh that you just load up the directory where it's set at and install that and then it'll load in uBlock Origin just like that. So, and then the AUR will manage your then you can manage uBlock Origin with Pac-Man rather than having it bother you about updating it maybe later on or it conveniently man updating it whenever it wants to. So yeah, it does pretty well. If we go to YouTube, I believe you can see that it blocks the ads pretty well because uBlock Origin, yes, mostly. I, I, there are some kinks I've noticed with it, but other than that, it does pretty well. So you can just... And it just works the same if you've used uBlock Origin before to update all your lists and stuff. So yeah, that's ungoogled Chromium. It doesn't have all the trackers and stuff in it. There are a lot of projects based on it. Um, QT Web Engine is one of those based on ungoogled Chromium, so you won't get that cruft in it. Um, the next one is kind of a controversial one due to the closed front end, but it's Vivaldi. It does have a lot of functionality. I've basically 
replaced Brave with this again. So Vivaldi is pre really, really configurable. So it's got like a lot of options from like changing the appearance and everything. You can change the appearance with CSS if you really want to get super nitty gritty with it. But and yeah, it looks like you can schedule your themes around so you can have the theme change depending on the time of day if you really want to. Like your start page options, you can got all kinds of options with that. The side panel, which is a really cool functionality. So Vivaldi is far from the oh Unix philosophy, and it just does a lot in one little package as a web browser. In some ways it's nice, in other ways it's like, why? But yeah. So you, yeah, you can just go through and configure a crap ton of things, mouse gestures, what have you. Um, you can add in your custom search engines. You can see I've added my Cirx instance here. So it's pretty easy to set up, you know, just kind of add a new one like that. And it's pretty simple to delete it too. Your privacy settings. So this one does have rudimentary ad blocking built in. Oh. I mean, well, yeah, I've looked at YouTube with it. And it still isn't perfect. So it's kind of like the cute browser implementation currently. I don't know if that's going to improve by release, but hopefully it does. This is one of those. So, like, I still have uBlock Origin installed in Vivaldi in spite of the ad blocking being turned on. So, but yeah, you, everything else is pretty simple. And the nice thing about this, too, is they do encrypt your data. I'm not sure how they store your password, but you can sync it up and encrypt your... It, it asks you for a separate password to encrypt your data. So you're going to log in to Vivaldi. And then it's going to be like, okay, you want to sync your data? Put in your password that you used to encrypt this data. So you have to basically go through kind of two levels of passwords in order to get your data working and synced correctly. And then, yeah, they've got other options too. They've got the readability stuff like Chrome and all. So you can kind of have fun with that. So like I mentioned, the side panels here, pretty cool. Um, you can have your social media feeds for like your Fediverse instance or whatever loaded up in here. And we can just browse through and look at it. And you can have it open while you're like browsing through the smug anime faces. Or while you're watching YouTube. So if you're one of those like crazy media freaks, yeah, you've got that. It does only load one thing up at a time, so you've only got that, but you can always like resize it so it fills up half the window, which doesn't make sense being as Vivaldi has another cool feature with it. And if I... Uh, so, beyond being just tab stacking, we can sit here and tile both of these together. So, like I said, Vivaldi has a lot of options. You can really dig deeper into it. And if you're interested in that kind of thing, I would recommend it. Because it even gets down to the point where you've got a Pomodoro clock built into Vivaldi. For, no, like, no reason at all. There's just so much to it that could take multiple videos to do. But... That's kind of one of the more friendly options if you don't like Brave or Firefox, but you still want that ungoogled Chromium experience because they build it on ungoogled Chromium as well. So the next ones are the more keyboard-oriented ones. Um, if we go to this one, this is Cute Browser. I've talked about it before. I've done a whole video on it. So you can check that out and look at well, I've done the ad block video on it. I did show off my config for it. So it kind of goes more into depth there. It is based on Google, again, Qt Web Engine. It's written with Python. So yeah, it can be kind of hefty on the RAM. It does run pretty well though. 
So, and the keyboard sh shortcuts are really nice. Then the other ones sort of like it are Vimby. Um, it's another keyboard oriented one that uses Vim keys. You can configure it. It looks like you have to edit the configuration and source if you want it to load up by default. But otherwise, you should be able to configure it at runtime. So you've got the whole man page here that you can mess with. So it does tell you how you can add in other stuff. So you've got this web add, add block that you can implement into it. It's pretty much like some of the other more rudimentary ad blockers. But it has options for that. And that particular ad block is a separate one. So you'll see even in some of the other ones that they recommend show you how to add this one in as an extension. But yeah, it gives you kind of some rudimentary things to work off of. And the config file as well. If you want to mess with that and play around with it, it lets you do that. I haven't really played around with it too much. It is a non-tabbed browser, so you only get a single window. And if you want tabs, you have to use something like tabbed to get that to work. So, yeah. Mentions that here. How can I have tabs? So, yeah, that's how you do it. It does tell you to use xdo tool in tabbed. And it means that you can have your key maps in your window manager without having to conflict with them too much because it's inside the browser itself. And it just run, spawn, basically spawns a shell to run xdo tool. So I think the last one is Lua Kit. Again, this one lets... it Instead of Python, it runs on Lua. Oh... You can add in that web blocker that I mentioned before. It does have some pretty lousy libraries, as you can tell. But it does seem to look pretty good. So this does allow you to use tabs. So if that's something you're looking for built in, you can do that. And a lot of people have gotten away with just like skimming through Lua in order to configure other things like Awesome WM. So I don't see how Lua Kit should be all that hard either. So, yeah. It's basically like Cute Browser and the other ones in a lot of respects in how it functions on the surface, but underneath it is very much different. So if you're looking for something else that you want to use and you want to go to something smaller, simpler, takes up less space, those last three give you pretty good options. If you want something that's got featureful, Vivaldi's definitely got it. Chromium's kind of there in the middle. You've got to do some extra little messing around in order to get it to work. But yeah, those are the web browsers that I think I can fully recommend as Firefox or Brave alternatives if you're moving away from Brave because they're not paying out as much anymore. You want to check me out? I'm on Twitch and other places. I live stream during the week. You, right now it's three days a week. I may change that around again later on. But you can find me on social media on my Pleroma instance at social.realnefestate.xyz. Um, fight me on Discord. And argue with me. Tell me why eLinks is, is the best browser and why you should only use that and I'll see you later.